course he began to compromise because of the women he had married, though God used him to make the beautiful temple so that in the world there would be a house of prayer. Yet, we've seen him fall into apostasy, which again, chapter 11 has made it very clear that apostasy is what he became a part of. And so, I feel I must say more about this area so that you can better understand where we're at, where we're at in the world today. Now, we've talked in the past of how the Bible t clearly teaches, I mean, it's as clear as a nose on my face, that there are seven Israels. In truth, there is even an eighth. Jesus is Israel. It's called Israel in Isaiah on one occasion. So if you include Jesus, there's eight Israels in the Bible. <laughs> And so when anybody says Israel, you got to know, what are you talking about Israel? Who's Israel? Now, who's the first Israel in the Bible? Jacob. Jacob, that's right. Jake the snake, he was first called Israel by God because instead of being a snake, he turned into being a pretty good guy. <laughs> he got converted at some point. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And God said from now on, your name's not going to be Jake. It's going to be Israel. And uh, he would be God's prince. And so that was the first Israel. Then from there, of course, we have the 12 tribes of Israel because, of course, from his loins, he had many sons and daughters. And so uh, that's kind of where the 12 tribes come from. And uh, so Israel had the children of Israel, we could call them, because eventually, of course, all 12 tribes were taken away into captivity, were they not? <laughs> and so then they had to leave Egypt at the hand of Moses and be brought into the land of promise. And so uh, the Bible speaks of these uh, different Israels. And then here we're getting in another concept because now there, there were 12 tribes of Israel in the land of Canaan, right? Yep. In the promised land, there once was these 12 tribes. Uh, and thank God, you know, they finally, God had raised them up a king. And that was David. And then uh, uh, first they had King Saul. Then they had King David, and then they had Solomon. And so each one of these three men reigned for 40 years. So Israel was a nation for a total of 120 years. But then here comes apostasy. Here comes a backsliding. And so you see why this is why America is in very dangerous territory. Because uh, you know, we've only been around for a couple hundred years. And wow, for any kind of republic to be this long in the world is a very unusual thing. Because it has been said that when America formed its Republican form of government, that was the first time since Israel that there was a Republican form of government in the world. Since the times of David. So... We can totally understand why when you decide to turn your back on your God, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And America's in trouble. Now these northern ten tribes are sometimes called Ephraim in the Old Testament especially because the Lord had many pronouncements he made against the northern tribes, and especially Ephraim, because as we've already read back there in Judges, as you may remember, even the Levite who had a concubine, and yet uh, these people mistreated her so badly, he ended up just cutting her up in 12 pieces and mailed her out to, at the post office to all 12 tribes so that when they saw how mutilated somebody's body was, they all got upset, but they was ready to go clean house and destroy uh, well, because of the apostasy that took place in Ephraim. And, of course, that's where we get the um, whole story of uh, the fella that started his own, made his own gods, you know, and made, his, and made uh, their own sons or priests and all that, and the woman, you know, and the... Because he had stolen her gods and 
all that story of that apostasy that took place back there because Dan and Ephraim were quick to leave the Lord and go after strange gods and start their own religion to where they have people all dressed up and they have all kinds of little dollies and uh, worship the images instead of the God of the Bible. So because of that apostasy and because they were so quick to always go against God, it's one of the reasons why God often just referred to the whole ten northern tribes as Ephraim. So that tried to stay true to God. Obviously, because of Jerusalem being the headquarters and that being a part of Judah, uh, though the northern tribes are going to be carried off into Babylon quite early, and because it's because of their apostasy, we see the two southern tribes that were left were, were the two tribes of what? Judah and Benjamin. Benjamin and Judah. Of course, Benjamin was just a small tribe compared to Judah, but um, Benjamin and Judah were considered God's true states, and that's why America really thought when the Civil War went down in our country that God was on the side of the South because they saw themselves as the Southern tribes. And they saw the Northern tribes as having gone apostate. It's the southern tribes that demanded all the slaves of the south make merchandise for them so they could take it and make it and put it in their mills and run it and ship it around the world. It was the money of the north that financed the slavery of the south. But see, <laughs> America is not a repeat of Israel. <laughs> right. Right. And the south sure lost that war. And so a person can sometimes misread the Bible and read into it things that aren't there. Right. And that happened during the Civil War quite often. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, let's turn to Second Chronicles now, 25. Second Chronicles 25. The, in the Chronicles, we have Ezra chronicling and summing it all up of what happened with Israel and the Jews. And so we finally read in 2 Chronicles 25 and verse 7 these words, But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it. Be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy. For God hath power to help and to cast down. And Am Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Then Amaziah separated them, to wit the army that was come to him out of Ephraim, to go home again. Wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. Now, in America today, we have a, a movement, and it's especially prominent out west. And the further west you go, the closer you get to California, the more you listen to Christian radio even, or just listen to AM radio even, you, you start hearing all kinds of corn, corny preachers. They're so corny they say shucks. And they're always talking about Yeshua, you know. Right. And they're always mispronouncing God's name. And uh, they're always talking about uh, Yahweh. Right. They don't know the word Jehovah. And... Uh, and they want it, and they push, and they advance. They think it's just common sense, and they misread the Old Testament constantly. And they teach what we, we call British Israelism. Right. There is this theory that, okay, back there when there was Israel in the Holy Land, amen, uh, 
Of course, the northern ten tribes got pulled out first and went into Babylon, into captivity. But then uh, Judah and Benjamin stayed true to God, and they stayed in the land a little longer. But eventually they're going to get called off into captivity too. And so there's all these radio preachers in America, and they teach this idea. So those first ten tribes, as they went north, they end up fighting and with Babylon and for Babylon and getting um, into the... Uh, mountains of uh, around the Black Sea, you know, and Ashkenazi Jews come from them and and uh, some of the tribes went to the east and settled in the valleys of the India in, in, in India and, and but most of them went up into Europe and the ten tribes went up into Europe and became Europe. And then eventually they got on boats and came to America. And that man, all these men in Israel, men of Israel, came to America. And America is really the northern tribes of Israel. Right. That's what they teach. Yeah. They believe this. And it's some kind of, it's a, it's a real true racist doctrine they teach and they believe. Yeah. And it's pushed a lot out west. And uh, now we've heard of it a little bit around here because it's, coming back here a little bit because these people are listening to shortwave and other pro tendency to think what well, sounds logical right. see because when we're thinking about races and trying to study mankind as a race it sounds somewhat logical well what would them last two tribes be called if those tribe of Zebulun and the tribe of Issachar and all of them are called mm -hmm. Israel well what would the last two group of Hebrew people be called, well they would be called Jews because of Judah mm -hmm. and so that's what they advance they advance, the only people who call themselves Jews are people that are from the two southern tribes of Judah and Benjamin mm -hmm. and everybody else would be Israelites right. so see how it's very important you understand some things about Israel right. <laughs> and you understand even about this section now when all of a sudden Israel's no longer 12 tribes, but now it's going to only be 10. Mm -hmm. this, I mean, they'll die for this doctrine. And they push and they advocate this doctrine. And so they try to get people programmed into believing that, well, we got to keep the law. Yes, that's right. See? Because we're the only true followers of Yahweh. You know, and these hillbilly goofballs, like my cousin, uh, they really do believe somehow they're in God's uh, restored America have to adopt this to replace, uh, you know, what once he did have. And that way we can be God's 144,000, I guess. I mean, I'm just throwing that in next how silly that is. But So British Israelism erroneously thinks that the southern tribes are Jews and that the ten northern tribes were Israel who migrated further north to Europe and those were the Israelites. So that's why then all the more to take heed to what Paul warned us about in Romans chapter 11. Amen? Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now when Paul discusses this whole business of these Jews, uh, and who's a Jew and who's not a Jew, and God and his sovereignty of him choosing the people of Israel, to someday be restored as his people, right. you know. Right. Mm -hmm. He said in Romans 11 and verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Right. Mm -hmm. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness, in part, mm -hmm. is happened to Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so that's kind of where we're at on God's time chart. Right, right, right. Yes, the times of the fullness of the Gentiles has almost come in, brother. Yeah. And so once again, God is going to go back to using Israel again. And that's where the 144,000 will kick in. Like, But it ain't here yet. <laughs> Amen. Right. 
and this is still the times of the Gentiles, and uh, and so, and uh, so we need to say these things so that you know we're not ignorant and no, and the devil can't get an advantage of us. Right. All the tribes of Israel, all the tribes of Israel, you can call a Jew. Yeah. Any Hebrewite, any Israelite, any Zebulun. Uh, person or Issachar person or uh, tribe of Manasseh or any of them could be called a Jew and for sure they are all Hebrews without a doubt and and we see this in the Bible the Bible uses this general term and this general slang language so to speak to call them this because we see it in the Bible let's go to Jeremiah 34 9. Jeremiah 34 9. Mm-hmm. Right. That every man should let his manservant, every man his maidservant, being an Hebrew or an Hebrewess, go free, that none should serve himself of them, to wit, of a Jew his brother. See, see, this idea of, oh no, only those southern two tribes we're going to call a Jew, and all the northern ten are our Israelites. Well, no, the Bible don't say that right here. God's calling all the Jews, he, all the Hebrews, Jews, and all the Jews, Hebrews. <laughs> right. Amen? Right, right, right. So we have a good Bible basis mm-hmm. of calling anybody that wants to claim that ethnicity, because yeah. that's basically all it is. In this world, everybody's just interested, well, who was your mother? (laughs) And if somewhere in your background, you know, some mother of somebody somewhere was a Jewess, then it's understood, then you can claim that ethnicity. But see, the Bible teaches much more than ethnicity. The Bible teaches what is your religious belief? It's not enough. But there's these racists out here that want to just deal with racism. And believe me, we're down here near the end of the gene pool from Adam and Eve. And we're down here to where there ain't hardly nothing pure enough to be no race. Are you nuts? Right. You know, that's fruitcake stuff, man. But everybody has their preference. (laughs) Being high in 57. And then, oh, they want to park there and become a racist for some reason. It's very popular today, and it's sad because these things ought not be, especially among people who claim the blood of Jesus. I I couldn't believe it. One time I told somebody, how, hey, buddy, why don't you join Jesus' gang? This week I heard a preacher say that. He's talking about gangs, you know. And I, hey, man, how about joining Jesus' gang? And I said, wow, I thought I was the only guy that ever said that. But that's a blessing. Somebody else got it, too. (laughs) Once you belong to Jesus' gang, you ain't in the Crips and Bloods no more, clown, you know. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2. Now here's Paul. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 14. Reminding us. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly. According to the truth of the gospel. I said unto Peter before them all. If thou being a Jew. Well wait a minute. He's from Galilee. Wait a minute. He's supposed to be an Israelite. He's supposed to be a Hebrew according to these racist clowns and Hebrew Israelism. If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do Jews? Mm -hmm. So these clowns with their British Israelism these clowns like my cousin who thinks oh man we all have to line up with what the Bible says in the Old Testament that the Jews had to do and only have church on. Who do you think you are to compel a Gentile to live as a Jew? Because a Gentile, and ethnicity isn't what gets you to heaven anyhow. And that's what Paul's trying his best to help us get. But many have missed it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 3. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 4. Flesh, if any order, or, or any order, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Why would Paul say he's got more to trust? Because ethnicity-wise, ethnically right. speaking, right. he could he knew some of his heritage. Yeah. He checked, you know, with the DNA analysis, and he got a hold of genealogy.com, and he, can, <laughs> he knew kind of where he come from. 
Verse 5, circumcised. When was he circumcised? The eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. A law, a Pharisee. So he believed in being fair, and he was a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. <laughs> he's, he's got, man, he's a good Jew, ain't he? Right. He goes out of his way to kill people that are Christians. Put them in jail. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Right, right, right. So when it comes to living by all those uh, rules and regulations, uh, you couldn't find any fault in him. He crossed his T's, he dotted his I's. And so we like to refer to the idea of how the northern tribes, of course, were carried away. And, of course, one of the things they advocate out west, too, is this idea, well, the ten tribes have been lost and they spread out among the people of, Israel, of Europe. Now they come to America and we're it. And that's why we're so blessed as a nation and all this junk. <laughs> and it's the idea, you know, manifest destiny, you know. Yes, that's right. And so it was up to us to come over here and... and dominate the Indians and take over their lands and stuff that it couldn't be stopped because God was in it and uh, that's some of the things they want you to believe you know and everybody thinks well that makes sense you know no, not necessarily and so they teach well see the 12 or the 10 tribes well as long as God knows where they're at they're not lost right. yes. amen yes, right. and believe you me God knows where every one of them is just because you can't account for them as a anthropologist. Don't mean they're lost. And of course, more and more they have been going back to Israel. That's an interesting thing too. The land of Israel too. That's another interesting thing in our day. But notice what the Lord says in Luke chapter two, in verse thirty-six. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. Well, wait a minute, that's a northern tribe. They were supposed to be lost. Mm -hmm. But see, the truth is, among these people, they all have kept diaries, and they know who their mom and grandma was and mamma was and the great-great-grandma, and, and they kind of, they've kept up with themselves, and they know where they're at. They know what tribe they're from. You can sometimes tell it even in their name. You know, anybody named Cohen, that shows you, well, they're of Judah. And uh, there are certain names that they, they've kept that name because that's their way of identifying which tribe they're still with. Mm -hmm. And we that have, you know, fooled with trying to win uh, Jews to Christ are aware of these things. So here's, uh, I thought she's supposed to be lost. She ain't lost. Because the men, those tribes came back. Many of those came, came Ezra and Nehemiah. They came back. So in the accounting, they knew what, who was there and how many? Of course, there weren't nearly as many as came back as well. No, no, not at all. <laughs> she was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. But now as you do read your Bible and study the Old Testament especially, again, and you read about those ten tribes, it's especially those two tribes of Dan and Ephraim that got caught up in a big way, very early on, in leaving the God of Israel and going and following after the devil with a counterfeit religion. And that's why often when you read the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation, you'll not read the word Dan or read Ephraim because, again, God was so displeased with their early leaving him in celebrating Christmas and Easter and all the other pagan holidays that all the pagans still celebrate. Amen, preacher. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. 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 Now, <laughs> see, there was a reason why Ephraim and Dan were cast out. Right. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah. Let's look at I Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 8. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within threescore and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. 
Now, let's just say you once read the Bible once. Let's say you just read it once. You didn't read much of it, but you read it once. Mm -hmm. And you decided, uh, man, I'm going to make up a new religion. I'm going to compare what I know of the Jewish faith and Masonic Lodge, and I'll make it into a new form of Christianity. Everybody, oh, I had this wonderful angel come to me, and he showed me where the golden plates were, and gave me, man, I'm going to really be somebody. I'm going to be something. And I'm going to tell everybody that us Mormons, we're the descendants of Ephraim. That's who we are. We're all Ephraim's descendants. Right. That's the stupidest thing you could have said. Because no. right. the Bible teaches that Ephraim wouldn't be God's people. Right. So that tells you a lot about your Mormon church. They ain't God's people. The Bible says that right, right. there. Right. They're the ones that claim they are. Again, some people that should just stick their head in a bucket three times and pull it out twice, they'd probably be much better off. I'm sure they'd be more intelligent. Now let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7 and verse 15. Jeremiah 7, 15. And I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of... When you get into this, when you get into ethnicity, when you get into wanting to claim your heritage from your fathers and great-great-grandfathers and stuff... You're really getting in a dangerous position because that might mean that, oh, well, maybe right. God has cast that seed out. That's almost the stupidest thing you could ever claim. Because right. I guarantee you, probably somewhere, some of your mamas and papas didn't always do right and believe right. right. So it's better not to claim ethnicity. It's right. better to say you love the Lord with all your heart and mind and soul. Amen. Trust Jesus. Amen. Trust Jesus. That's right. Amen. So since he said, so since I've cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim, therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Mm -hmm. See, you might be racist, but God's not. Amen. And the Bible speaks of that in some other places, because they've sinned away their day of grace. Look at Revelation chapter 7. In verse 4. Okay, now here we're going to see some of this listing here. In Revelation 7, verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So God's going to rapture his church out of here one of these days pretty soon. And one of the first things that's going to happen is overnight, if we'd kept reading over back here in Romans, we'd read the next verse says it, yeah. Israel's going to be converted in a day. And all of a sudden, after the church is raptured out of here, I believe, bam, suddenly there's going to be Jews waking up left and right. Now, never mind, wasn't it wonderful to have this brother here to speak for us at starting a church over in New York, and yet he told us how his own mother was a Jewess. Right. So there's a real heavy Orthodox population of Jews in witnessing, sharing chick tracks every Sunday, every day, 10,000 tracks telling us the truth. Jesus is the Christ. And now they'll be preaching instead of him, and they'll be in the street preaching. And God's going to raise up all these fellas across the world. It's almost like now that the church is gone, he starts a tribulation church. That's really based on mostly the preaching of these 144,000. That's why there's still a book in the Bible called Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, June, Revelation. These last end books are for the last end preachers that will be preaching this wonderful message. And so the Bible says in Revelation 7, verse 5, of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. I don't see Dan in the list, and I don't see Ephraim. 
No. The two sons right. of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim? Right. Yes. And yet all of a sudden there's something else instead of that. It's called the tribe of Joseph. Mm-hmm. See? Uh, well, there's no doubt that there's a few. There's a few that were saved and love God and still believe in God. But see, they're just with being listed in Revelation as one of the preachers. Notice how they can't claim that name of Ephraim or Dan, either one. Because the Lord's kind of got finished with them back there when they became reprobate. Amen? So again, this Bible backs this thing up. And again, there's a... To be honest... Really, the truth is, do you like make pe- making, making people uncomfortable? Of course you don't. You want everybody to like you. You want to get a you. You want to live peaceably with all men. You don't want nobody out to kill you. And you don't want to kill nobody. And so we have a tendency to get along. And go softly, not make waves. That's the natural tendency, is to try to live at peace with all men, which the Bible speaks of that. Now we should as much as possible. Amen. But sometimes it just ain't possible. Because we can't compromise our convictions. And yet, the newest thing, and it'll be in our next newsletter. Of course, our newsletter, we kind of keep you up with the Pope and what his decisions are, because all the Catholics you talk to need to know these things. And the latest thing is now, is sure enough, there's a picture of him with a council of at least uh, uh, 14 people. And how, of course, Miss Rothschild, she's there speaking, and he's put together some new council. He's, he's got some new... Uh, Council, he's called together some new financial council or something, and they're calling for a one world religion, you know. And, and, and I listened to Mrs. Rothschild as she was making her appeal that how, uh, how can anybody uh, in the future be at peace in the world unless they have a change in their moral character? And so, this is why she's entreating the Pope to join into this council. And so, of course, the Pope's happy to join in and be the head of any council. To for for us so as to have one world religion, sure, because this is where it's all headed. They want a one world religion. You're going to give be given special treatment. You get you get loans at the bank where other people won't get them because they're not a part of the system. And it's all good. And this is the year they're going to this, this fall they're going to start putting it in all the public schools. They're going to get get all the kids to get vaccines. So now they're once they're in the system, now the computers. Now we can see what they're thinking and we can tell them what these kids is going to brainwash them to be this way. And this way we can control them. We can go what they're thinking. We can see if they've answered the questions right or wrong on the computer because it's all rigged into the computer because it's called a B system for a reason. (laughs) And we'll control this kid from the cradle to the grave with the vaccine because it becomes a vaccine passport. Oh, you haven't heard that word? Well, you will. Just wait one more month to go, and then you'll wish you had never heard it. This is where we're headed, boys and girls. Except those days be short, and no flesh would be saved. And so this idea, his idea, uh, he's getting all the religions together. See, oh, he's got this woman that loves this God. He's got that woman that loves that God. Of course, they have to have their tree, and of course, they have to have the star of, let's call it the star of David, that way, everybody else be suckered into thinking it's okay today. So you see why I say, if you go to Gateway Anabaptist Church, you're getting church on a college level. Right. All right, let's all stand, bar heads in prayer. Amen. Lord, again, we're so thankful for the Bible. It's so simple and plain, but of course, we have to have a Bible to believe that. And of course, mm-hmm. thank God we've got a King James sixteen eleven that we can count on 100%. So thank you, Lord, that you want us to know the end from the beginning because that's the God of prophecy that you are and that we have no excuse to plead ignorance about these things. We have to continually get ready. 
because there's nothing but wars and rumors of war. And in some ways, when the old silly uh, Chinese said, well, we're going to threaten Pelosi, and if we see her plane going to Taiwan, we're going to shoot her down. Well, we kind of make some things a little easier for us in this country. So please, Lord, uh, help us to be the witness you want us to be in this day and hour. And in Jesus' name we ask it, and amen.